do dialing in my beans do 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 Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is my breakfast. And this is Blagniacs. Today I'm going to talk about trepanning, which is a very cool operation on the lathe. It's great for saving material and for making certain kinds of parts in a really efficient way. I think you'll like it. Let's go. In an alternate universe, trepanning might be called face parting or face grooving. It's when you want to cut a groove circumferentially on the face of a spinning part. Now, it also happens to be the name of a pre-scientific medical procedure, so I don't recommend Googling that word because you need to see those pictures like you need a hole in your head. So obviously you could use trepanning if you needed like an o-ring groove on the face of a surface, but it has some cool side benefits. A big one is that it saves you material. If you need to cut, let's say, a big circular part out of a large chunk of material like this, you might think, well, I need to center drill and drill and then bore this all the way out, and you're going to reduce all of that material in the middle to chips. And if that material is expensive, well, you're wasting money, and if even if it isn't, you're wasting time. The other cool use case here is that if you've got a piece of square stock and you need it to be round, trepanning is often a quicker and more efficient way to make it round rather than just turning down the OD. So even if you're not worried about saving stock, you know, it might actually still be a more efficient way to get your operation done. It's also good for opening canned goods, but you're going to want to stick to your thicker soups and your bean-based products, and you want to be quick on that dismount with the chuck. What does the tool geometry look like for this then? Well, a good place to start would be a parting or a grooving tool, right? Because this looks very much like a groove that could be made with a tool geometry like that. So what happens if we do that? Here's a basic grooving or parting tool, and it looks mostly okay, all the normal clearances. But if we're getting close, look what's happening on the outer radius of the circle. You can see here that the curve of the cut is coming in and interfering with the bottom edge of the tool there. So we have a clearance issue there. But the good news is the fix is intuitively obvious. Just swap that tool out for one ground like this where the angle on the outer radius of the circle is a little steeper and you can see that now it clears. And this is really all there is to basic trepanning tool geometry. But you can also see from these drawings that there's an interesting trade-off in trepanning geometry that you don't see in other operations. The smaller the radius you're cutting, the more clearance you need under the tool, and thus the less support you have under the cutting edge. So you tend to end up grinding multiple trepanning tools for different ranges of radii. You don't want to just use one ground for really tight radii because it's going to have poor support under the cutting edge. But then a tool ground for large radii isn't going to work on small radii. There's some more advanced things we can do here, which I'll cover at the end of this video, but let's start with this basic form. I always find it helpful to draw what I'm going to grind, so I'll blue this guy up after cleaning it with some acetone. And then I'm going to mark my basic parting profile here. It's about 100 thou wide and 3 eighths thick. And then uh, mark it on the other side where it really should go. It's uh, helpful to have the parting blade side of it on the inside of where the tool post will be because it gives you more clearance around the tool post. And then to get rid of the bulk of the material, I'm going to bust out the angle grinder. That'll save us a whole lot of grinding time. And it, uh, well, it's also fun. As I go here, I'm using water to keep the tool a bit cool, but I don't know how necessary that is. It's fun though. And high speed Yahtzee. With that basic shape roughed in, I can dress my grinding wheel, my least favorite part of tool bit grinding, and I can grind it down to my lines. So I'm starting with the end here. If you want to know more about what I'm doing here, I'll refer you to my video on grinding tool bits. This is really just leveraging my 10 degree table as usual to clean up those sides. I've roughed in a basic parting tool profile. I've got about 100 thou of width there and I've clearanced it back from the cutting edge a little bit on the sides. I've clearanced the end there as well and I've also clearanced the sides. Now the question is, could this be used for a trepanning tool as is? 
The answer is maybe. It depends on how much clearance you have on the sides and whether it's sufficient for the radius that you're trying to trepan. Now, in this case, I've got a little more clearance than is really necessary for a parting tool. This is 10 degrees, three to five is plenty, but uh, it really depends on the radius that you're trying to trepan. But let's see if this is sufficient clearance as is for the operation that we wanna do. And then we'll have to put some top break in there depending on the material that we're cutting, or you can just put a little chip breaker in the end for a parting or grooving tool. That's often all you need. And before doing any actual cutting, I'll clean up those grinding marks and burrs with a little stone hone, as is tradition. And after that little stone bath, this is looking pretty decent. You can see how it's so far just a basic parting tool. Now let's go see if this might work. For this test, I'm going to use this chunk of 2024 aluminum that was donated by a viewer, and this is neat stuff. Unlike the traditional 6061 that you're going to most commonly encounter, this stuff has a 7,000 PSI higher yield strength than that regular aluminum, and uh, it's actually an alloy with uh, copper, and I think there's some manganese in there, and it's much less susceptible to fatiguing from, like, work hardening, and so it's commonly used in aircraft, fuselages, and wings. So it's pretty cool stuff. It's quite a bit stronger than regular aluminum, and, uh, well, because of that, it's three times the price, which makes it an excellent candidate for trepanning. If we can keep some of this out of the chip tray, we should do so. I started by facing off the end, as is tradition. And I put a light center in there, not for tail support, but as a cheater hole for the divider, as you'll see here in a moment. I'm going to blue this up so that you can better see what I'm doing, and also because it's super fun to blue things up on a spinning lathe. Groovy man. So I'm going to mark the boundaries of this theoretical part. It's going to be a ring that has the same OD as the stock, and then here's my roughly 100 thou wide cut line. I'll use the tailstock here to square up the tool post. It's quite important that the trepanning tool be square so that our clearances remain effective as the tool goes into the work. Now let's line it up here on our lines and just see if this basic parting tool grind is going to work. Now, it's really hard to show on camera, and the clearance on the leading edge makes it difficult to see how it lines up, but you can in person see that it looks like that is probably going to rub on the outside radius. So all I need to do is take it back to the grinder and take a little bit off the bottom edge there. And if this can be curved, or you can just make some facets on there, just remove some of that material that's gonna be near the bottom edge there. And uh, this can just be done by trial and error. Now I'll do a test cut here and see if I can get away with no top break on this tool. Note that the end of the tool isn't ground square, it's biased to the outside a little bit, and that helps prevent burrs if the trepan is your final operation, but it'll work fine if it's square as well. It is, however, really wanting to chatter. It's uh, right on the edge of chatter here, and it's not cutting as well as I would like. So, back to the grinder, and I just put a little chip breaker slash top break behind that cutting edge there, just using the corner of the grinding wheel. And now let's give it another shot. And it's going to be a little noisy until we get through those chatter marks, but once we do, now it's cutting quite well. Now for feeds and speeds, you want to go pretty modest. So this is 80 RPM, and this is a 4-inch diameter part. I'm a little further from the chuck than I would like to be, so chatter is still uh, threatening to enter the room here, but I'm managing to keep the door closed with a very gentle feed and uh, lots of cutting fluid and a good sharp tool there with an aggressive rake on it for this aluminum. Now keep in mind, this is a form tool, just like any other parting or grooving tool. So you've got a wide cutting edge there, doing a lot of work, so tool pressure is high. And in this case, you know, this is a 100 thou wide tool, which is a lot for this little baby lathe. So you're going to need to take it easy. So you can see here how far in I went, just far enough to get the part that I want, this hypothetical ring that's, I'm sure, very important for something. And now we can go ahead and part it off in the usual way. I should note here on my parting tool that I'm really feeling this 2024 aluminum. It's parting quite a bit tougher than usual 6061 does on this little lathe. And I'm also working pretty far from the chuck here. I'm about four inches away from the chuck, which is, again, asking a lot from this little hobby machine. But we are getting it done if we keep the speeds and feeds nice and low. And Yahtzee. 
and there's our little ring. And you can see that the vast, vast majority of the stock is still untouched and ready to be used for other parts. So this ring could be a bushing or a bearing backer or a ring gear blank or any number of things. So what is this ring for? Uh, I guess this. Let's see if it flies. Yep, that's what it was for. So that's the very basics of trepanning. Now there are some more advanced tool geometries you can use here to get more sophisticated and efficient results, especially with multiple parts. So I'm going to direct you to a great video by Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools. Uh, he goes into uh, some more of the gory details of trepanning that I have not covered here. It's a great video. Tom's amazing. But that's my little speech on trepanning. I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I'm doing, feel free to throw me some love on Patreon. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Be careful out there. Catch those beans.